Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. I remember going seeing this movie at the cinemas when it very first came out and I remember the opening music kicking in and we see the writing start scrolling through the stars and just thinking yes Star Wars is back. But then we got almost two hours of people talking politics. <laughs> So most of this movie doesn't actually feel like a Star Wars movie, but some of it does, and that's why it's worth watching. But there's a lot of talk in this movie about senators, re-election, peace treaties, and other political garbage. And you just sort of sat there like, I really hope someone takes out a lightsaber soon. I mean, even the Jedi's getting on it with their Jedi Council. But I didn't mind seeing that because at least those scenes are interesting and you get to see Yoda and Mace Windu and they're cool, so you can't really complain. One thing I do have to say about this movie is that visually, it's really impressive what they do. I mean, yeah, they probably rely on CGI a little bit too much, but it looks good and they do a great job of creating these worlds and bringing them to life. It's just a shame that they didn't focus a little more on the story. It's not all bad though, I mean they did a really good job of Qui-Gon Jinn. I mean he was the star of this movie for me, because it's kind of unclear who the star was actually meant to be. I mean you could argue it's Anakin as this is the start of his story, but we don't even see him until we're over 30 minutes in. Or maybe the main star's meant to be Obi-Wan Kenobi, but he disappears for like a big portion around the middle of the movie where he's just sat chilling out on a broken down spaceship. So in my opinion it's got to be Qui-Gon. And Liam Neeson's great in this role as the wise Jedi who's like the mentor to Obi-Wan and Anakin in a way. I mean he's probably the main reason to watch episode 1. So Anakin Skywalker is a kid in this movie who's immaculately conceived by the Force. Um. Okay. And all he wants to do is be freed from being a slave so he can go out and see the world and then come back and rescue his mother. So you do kind of root for him, I mean you'd have to be pretty heartless not to. Even knowing what he's eventually going to become. That. So Natalie Portman is good in this movie, I mean she's kind of kept in the background for the majority of the movie even though she always seems to be around. But when the focus is actually on her, I mean yeah she's good in this movie. One of the best scenes in this movie is the pod race scene which they do a really good job of. And if you're watching this review, I mean I'm sure you've already seen that like one or two times. Or even played through it on the N64. Yep, that one scene got a whole game devoted to it. So now I've mentioned something positive, it's time for another negative. Jar Jar Binks. Do I really need to say more? I mean, I get it. I'm not meant to like Jar Jar Binks. He's not aimed at me. I am not a part of the demographic that's supposed to like him. But he's just so annoying to watch that you just kind of mentally check out every time he pops up on the screen. Because his character does nothing for the story except to give little kids something to laugh at in between all the politics. And then at the end of the movie where the action's actually getting good, they just keep cutting back to Jar Jar, like fumbling around a battlefield. And the problem with it is like, yeah, the kids have got Jar Jar, that's fine. Leave it to them, it's aimed at them. Where Where's the comic relief for the adults? Where's like the Han Solo wisecracks? Where's the sort of funny character for us to break the tension? There really isn't one. I mean that kind of edgy rogue character is really missing from this story. Well I suppose we do get R2-D2 and C-3PO so we can't complain too much. The final fight scene between Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan taking on Darth Maul is my favourite part of this whole movie because it actually feels like Star Wars. I mean I wish Darth Maul's character had been a bit more developed before we got there. You know maybe we'd heard him like speak more than two lines in the whole movie. That would have been good. But from what we see of him, we do get that he's just sort of plain evil. I mean, just look at him. They made him look like some sort of devil and then passed him a lightsaber. So overall, this is not my favourite Star Wars movie. Did that come across? I do think that it looks amazing and I do think that they did enough good things to make it watchable. But all that politics was just dull and unnecessary because most people don't care. The original trilogy just sort of layered all that stuff in really naturally without it ever feeling too fast. Whereas this just sort of beats you over the head with it. But this is still Star Wars and there are some really interesting enjoyable parts that are definitely still worth seeing. So I give this movie a 3 out of 5. I mean it's episode 1. Even if you only bother watching it once, definitely check it out. So I'm going to be reviewing all the Star Wars movies in the next few weeks before The Force Awakens opens in December. So be sure to subscribe to check them out. Also please don't forget to like this video and help the channel to grow. And until next time, thanks for watching.